All right, let's look at nucleophilic substitutions, the mechanisms by which these reactions take place. The most uh, simple, in a way, mechanism is what's known as the SN2 reaction mechanism. So SN2 stands for substitution nucleophilic, and the 2 stands for bimolecular, which will become more um, apparent as we talk about it. The SN2 mechanism involves simultaneous breaking of the bond to the leaving group. In this case, we're talking about haloalkane, so it's a halide that's leaving. While we simultaneously get bond formation to the nucleophile group. So the Rady reaction, because both these groups, both the uh, nucleophile coming in and the uh, reactant that we're reacting with, are both involved in the one step, the rate of these reactions is equal to a rate constant times the concentration of the haloalkane times the concentration of the nucleophile. So that means if we, if we increase the concentration of either of those components, we should see an increase in reaction rate. And for example, if we double the um, concentration of both of them, we'll get a reaction rate that is four times uh, the previous reaction rate. So here's an example. We've got hydroxide as a nucleophile, and its lone pair of electrons is coming in to make a new bond to the carbon atom of this haloalkane at the same time as the bond between the carbon of the haloalkane is uh, leaving towards the halogen to make Br- as the leaving group. So the transition state for these reactions looks like this, where we have partial bond formation between the carbon atom and the nucleophile, and a partial bond between the carbon atom and the leaving group. So even though the starting material is tetrahedral and the product is tetrahedral, the transition state for this reaction is actually bipyramidal with uh, the three groups on the central carbon lying in a plane and then the incoming group and the leaving group both being uh, orthogonal to that plane. So if we look at this in terms of electron densities, here we've got a hydroxide anion and it's got a very large uh, excess electron density on the oxygen. So it's delta negative or has a partial negative charge on the oxygen atom. And then it's coming in and interacting with uh, the uh, halo alkane. So now we've got the halogen is partially negatively charged and the carbon is attached to because the halogen is pulling electron density away the carbon atom is partially positively charged and so we get that uh, charge interaction between the two that's, um, that, that's a, a positive experience. The other uh, major mechanism for nucleophilic substitution reactions is known as the SN1 reaction mechanism. So SN1 stands for substitution nucleophilic and it's unimolecular, hence the 1. So the bond between the carbon and the leaving group is actually broken first in a separate step and then the nucleophile comes in to form the new bond. The rate of the reaction is only related to the rate constant times by the concentration of the halo alkane. So in a perfect, uh, in a perfect world, uh, the concentration of the nucleophile doesn't affect the rate, rate of the reaction. And that's because the first step, breaking of this carbon-halogen bond, is slow and therefore rate determining. So the whole rate of the reaction relates to this very first step to make a carbocation, which is highly unstable, and then goes on to react with the nucleophile. So the nucleophile can come in from either side of that carbocation to make the new species like this. And then finally, we can get proton transfers to get to our, our final product. And so the SN1 reaction is a reaction mechanism that goes via multiple steps, as opposed to the SN2, which is a single step with bomb formation and bomb breaking happening at the same time. So these nucleophilic uh, substitution reactions, um, they because the nucleophile can attack that carbocation from either side, either the right or the left in this case, that means if we started with one enantiomer of the haloalkane, if it's chiral, because the uh, carbocation is achiral, is flat, we'll end up with a racemic mixture of the two enantiomers of the product because this nucleophile can come in from either side of that group to give the either the S or the R enantiomer. And so the racemization of a uh, enantiomerically pure 
chiral uh, halo alkane is evidence for an SN1 type of mechanism uh, in the substitution reactions. Now, the nucleophile can have an uh, impact on the way these reactions occur and the rate at which they occur. So good nucleophiles are things like bromide or iodides. They're low uh, row elements on the periodic table. They have a negative charge. So they've got some uh, negative charge that wants to seek out a, a positively charged nucleus. They're uh, negatively charged thiols and um, thiolate, sorry, thiolates. So S minus uh, attached to an R group. Or they're hydroxide alkoxides or methoxide. Um, so they're oxygen with a negative charge as a good uh, nucleophile as well. Uh, moderately good nucleophiles are things like uh, carboxylate anions, uh, thiols that haven't been deprotonated and thioethers, and amines such as ammonia and uh, alkyl amines, so organic amines. Poor nucleophiles are things like water, which doesn't have a negative charge, alcohols, which are similar to water, and carboxylic acids, which uh, also don't have a negative charge. And oxygen is quite an electron withdrawing, so it likes to keep on to its lone pair of electrons, so it's not as like likely to act as a nucleophile. Uh, so the nature of the nucleophile also impacts the mechanism by which the, uh, the nucleophilic substitution occurs. So SN2 reactions, uh, the nucleophiles participate in the rate determining step. So the better the nucleophile, the more likely the reaction will occur via an SN2 mechanism. That, that makes sense. So if in an SN2 reaction mechanism, the nucleophile is actually involved in the rate determining step, then we'll expect good nucleophiles will be uh, good at promoting that type of reaction mechanism. <coughs> On the other hand, SN1 reaction mechanisms, the nucleophile doesn't actually even occur, uh, um, it's not even present in the rate determining step. So reactions occur at approximately the same rate with any nucleophile. So even poor nucleophiles can react in an SN1 reaction mechanism to give the product with not much different uh, difference between poor nucleophiles and good nucleophiles. So the structure of the halo alkane can also have a big impact on the rate of the reaction and which mechanism by which the reaction goes by. So SN1 reactions are governed by the relative stability of the carbocation that you would form, this intermediate. So tertiary carbocations are relatively stable and so SN1 reaction mechanisms are favoured where we can generate a tertiary carbocation. So SN2 reactions are really highly governed by steric hindrance. So that's the amount of uh, crowding or steric bulk around that uh, atom that is undergoing substitution. Now, a uh, little bit of a typo here. This should say uh, halo methanes, so methyl halides, and primary halo alkanes. So the very unhindered, non sterically hindered um, halo alkanes have little crowding around that carbon atom undergoing reaction. And so they tend to favor the SN2 reaction mechanism. So here we've got a bromoethane, and it's undergoing SN2 reaction because there's relatively little, little steric hindrance around that carbon undergoing reaction. Whereas uh, this molecule is a tertiary alkyl halide, that carbon atom is hindered by three methyl groups. And so when a nucleophile comes in, it would suffer a lot of steric hindrance from those methyl groups, and so SN2 reaction mechanisms are very unfavored for tertiary alcohol halides. The leaving group also has a role to play in these nucleophilic substitution reactions. So the most stable anions um, and the best leaving groups are uh, the conjugate bases of strong acids. So we know that the conjugate bases of strong acids are very stable. So things like I minus, it's a very stable anion. It's got a big nuclear charge to stabilize that one negative charge. It's very polarizable as well. Bromide is also a very good leaving. Chloride is not as good. Fluoride is actually a very poor leaving group. We also have things like carboxylate anions, hydroxide, and then we get to the really poor leaving groups like uh, alkoxides and amide anion, which is a terrible leaving group. This is a very unstable anion. 
Uh, the structure of the halo alkane, as I alluded to earlier, can have a big effect on the nucleophilic substitution mechanism. So the general trend is that tertiary, uh, tertiary alcohol halides will never go via an SN2 reaction mechanism because they're so sterically crowded around that carbon atom bearing the halogen. On the other hand, the carbocation that you would form is very stabilized, and so they really favor SN1 reaction mechanisms. Primary alcohol halides and methyl, uh, ha uh, methyl alcohol halides, so halomethanes, uh, really favor the SN2 reaction mechanism because they're very unhindered uh, sterically. But primary and methyl carbocations are extremely unstable and pretty much never form within solutions, so they never go via an SN1 reaction mechanism. Now, tertiary, oh sorry, secondary alcohol halides are in between. So sometimes they will undergo SN1 type reactions, sometimes they'll undergo SN2 type reactions, and it really depends on the conditions and the solvent by which the uh, reaction is being conducted. So let's have a look at the solvent effects. So in protic solvents, so this is uh, solvents that contain OH groups, we have the possibility for hydrogen bonding. And that hydrogen bond can stabilize the leaving group. And so water is a very good uh, hydrogen bond donor, and it can stabilize leaving groups very well. So water is very good at favoring SN1 uh, reaction uh, conditions. Forming acid is also similar. It's very polar and has OH groups. Methanol is uh, a little bit less good, but still is a, a good hydrogen bond donor. Ethanol and then acetic acid. So all of these uh, stabilize the carbocation because they're polar solvents. But they also stabilize the leaving group by solvating it through hydrogen bonds. Um, aprotic solvents are solvents that have no OH groups and no ability to hydrogen bond. And so they can't act as hydrogen bond donors and can't stabilize the anion. So molecules like dimethyl sulfoxide, this molecule here, that's a very polar but aprotic solvent. So we call these polar aprotic solvents. And they really favor SN2 type of reactions because they can stabilize the partial positive and negative charges that are building up at the transition state in an SN2 reaction. But they can't stabilize the leaving group itself in that rate determining step of an SN1 reaction mechanism. So even though the solvents at the top of this list are polar, because they're aprotic, they don't stabilize an anionic leaving group, and therefore they don't favor the SN1 reaction mechanism. So to summarize, there's a bunch of different factors that will favor either SN1 over SN2. The easy situations are very uh, unhindered methyl and primary alkyl halides always favor SN2, and SN1 does not generally occur. Uh, tertiary alkyl halides, SN2 doesn't occur because the carbon with that leaving group is so hindered uh, that it uh, is very difficult to get to that center. Whereas SN1 is generally favored because the tertiary carbocation in this form is very stabilized. And then uh, secondary alkyl halides, we can get a choice between either SN1 or SN2 depending on the solvent. SN2 being favored in aprotic polar solvents, whereas SN1 is favored in protic solvents like uh, water and uh, formic acid. Remember SN2 goes with inversion and configuration because we uh, go through this, um, this particular mechanism where we get the nucleophile coming in opposite to the leaving group, whereas uh, the SN1 mechanism will lead to racemization of a chiral um, uh, starting material. Okay, so that's the uh, main factors to think of when you're uh, looking at substitution reactions of haloalkanes, um, SN1 versus SN2, and some of the things to think about when you're looking at those two possible me mechanisms. Thanks for watching.